technologies of um, technologies of freedom, technologies which of suppression. Uh, social, uh, even today's New York Times, there's uh, articles about the death of social media, the huge, uh, the interesting question of the Dominion suit and uh, the, the settlement. So uh, I think that the mood has been a vehicle to capture the imagination of young people around the world. And in, and in doing so, they fulfilled the passion and uh, concentration of the staff. So I think we've had a wonderful combination of uh, a dedicated staff, imaginative students around the world, changing technology, and now as well changing geopolitical alliances. It'll be interesting to see what the meshing of all these independent and dependent changes will be on how to formulate questions, how to formulate arguments. It'll be interesting to see whether there's an inflection in the way issues are argued because of changes in the large scale narratives, the role of China, the role of uh, the shifts in geopolitical power. So thank you to all of you. And I, thanks to John, who's been a supportive colleague in all of this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mara, uh, for, for this note. And we would like to continue with a couple of thank yous uh, because we think it's really, really important to emphasize a couple of people uh, in this process. So I would like first to, before moving to that, I would really like to thank the team behind this. So Sarah Norman, Sanya Santani, Juliana Mota, and Camila Dari Morgan that is not in position to be here with, with us today. So even we are behind the screens and um, a lot is happening. And as our director, Kate O'Regan has mentioned, we really enjoyed this competition. We really put a lot of effort into it. And I hope that you all can feel it behind these screens. Um, and we are much, much looking forward to continue doing this. So once again, thank to all my colleagues because without them, this won't be possible. And it's the best team, as Kate mentioned, and I love to work with them. We have a lot of fun besides the real work that uh, that we do. So I'm just going to ask Sarah uh, to say a couple of words. With And we are mostly reflecting the work that we have been doing uh, behind, behind the moot. Thank you, Navena. Uh, well, before I just move on to my thank yous, um, I just want to say congratulations to all of you and um, particularly for bearing with the whole technological side of things and um, just from our side you all come over amazingly to us so just wanted to let you know that and it's been a really great final today and the whole competition but um, I work uh, primarily alongside lots of the judges so I wanted to just highlight the work that they do we have judges from all over the world in the regional rounds and in the this final round, um, who give up very precious time to join us and to um, ju judge all these matches. I know they give you all some valuable feedback and I hope that, you know, that's helpful to you. Um, so we're, we couldn't do it without them and we're very, very grateful to them. Um, so just what you need to know is that I put names on lists and I will be coming for you to judge for us. So now that you are all part of the Moot family, you, you can't escape. Um, so just so that you know that, um, uh, we will be keeping in touch and we will be uh, looking for you to join us as judges. I'm sure some of you will go and join as coaches, but we can't do any of it without the judges. So it's a huge, huge thank you to them uh, from all of us, the team, and I'm sure from all of you guys too. Um, so once again, just congratulations and um, yeah, watch out for my emails. Thank you so much, Sarah. Uh, throughout the year, I usually also I'm usually dealing with all of our regional rounds that we have. So so far we had eight regional rounds this year. Unfortunately, we needed to merge to 
two of them uh, because of our Northeast European round that was supposed to be held in Kiev, but we managed to find a solution and merge our Southeast European round with Northeast European round, and we were lucky to have a Central East European round in Budapest in December. And I would love to, uh, I would like to use this opportunity to thank all of our regional coordinators. So starting with Central East Europe, those that was Gergeli Gostoni with the help of Alina Pravdichenko and Maxim Dvorvoy. And you must meet, met them also because they judged. Uh, Asia Pacific Round, our long-term coordinator, Shu Fei, she has been doing an amazing job and I love to collaborate with her. We had uh, Northern Europe Rounds in Paris and Nada Abu Seub uh, managed to uh, run that in person and it was a lovely round for some of you who were there as well. We had America's Rounds in New York, also in person this year, ran by uh, Zoe Burke from Cardozo Law School. Uh, South Asia Rounds were online and they were run by uh, Nithi Singh, Ayan Gupta and Pranika Goel. They do such an amazing job uh, as well. Africa Rounds uh, were uh, run by our dear colleague, Sanya Samtani. And uh, last but not least, Middle East rounds were run by our long-term coordinators, Ahmed Khalifa and Ola Nagy. So I would love like to use this opportunity to thank them all. And I'm also looking forward for another mutual and collaboration with all of them. Um, moving forward, I'm, I would love to give floor to Sanya, my colleague, so she can say a couple of words as well. Thanks, Nevena and Sarah. Um, Putting my regional coordinator hat on, I also would like to recognize that regional rounds would not have been possible without judges, again, uh, who gave up their time to ensure that the in-person rounds, the online rounds, the pre-moots, that everything ran like clockwork, that participants got intense feedback, and um, that they got to actually speak to quite a lot of the judges even after the rounds. So thank you very much, regional rounds judges. Um, there's often a criticism of moot courts as promoting the cult of the charismatic oralist. Uh, and while we've seen very charismatic oralists today, that's not a takeaway from you. Um, but our moot is unique because we ensure that a third of our scoring system depends on written memorial scores. So on that note, we'd also like to recognize our regional memo markers and international memo markers. The international memo markers in particular are Petr Radoslavyev, Chani Srivastava and Gehan Gunatilike. Now, for those of you in the mooting community who've been with us for a few years, you'll recognize these names because not only do they participate uh, and, and provide their time in marking memorials, they also show up to judge often. And in particular, Gehan writes the problem. So he's the face behind the case. And we heard this year from more judges than ever that the case was an absolutely fascinating one that touched on cutting edge contemporary issues um, and was in fact very balanced. Um, so we also thank Gehan for his imaginative take on these events. Um, we'd like to now move on to what we've all been waiting for, the award ceremony. So Juliana, I think it's time uh, that you take over and uh, begin the award ceremony. Thank you everyone for your time. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Sonia. Uh, we're going to start with the award ceremony. But before that, we would just very much like to acknowledge the hard work you all put into this moot. Uh, none of this would be possible, obviously, without the teams themselves. And congratulations on your dedication and for being here today. So before we announce all of the prizes, we would like to briefly announce all of the teams that participated with us and would, would like to ask you to join us in a virtual round of applause to each and every one of you. So we are just going to share the names. Please let me know if you can see my screen. Not yet. Give me a second. Go. I think it's going to work. No? Yes? Sorry, Juliana. Not yet. Oh, technology. 
we've been doing this for years, but I don't know why it's not working. It said it is working. So, okay, let's try one more time. Okay. okay. My screen now. Wow, oh, perfect. It's good. <laughs> Amazing. Can you see it in full screen or not? We can. Yes. Yes. Oh, perfect. Okay. So please join me in a virtual round virtual of applause. Virtual round of applause. I'm having, I'm having a, a turn on my audio. So please, can you all move yourself? Perfect. To Team 102, University, uh, King, King's College of London. Congratulations. We also had Team 105, University of Oxford. Team 107, Queen Mary University of London. Team 108, City University of London, one of our finalists. Congratulations. Uh, team 207, University of Dhaka. Team 210, please apologize if I say the name wrong. Hidayatullah National Law University. Team 216, Denning Law School. Team 223, Nalsa University of Law. Team 301, Atwas Laurent University. Team, team 302, University of Bucharest. Team 303, University of Ljubljana. 304 was the University of Vienna. 307 was the University of Sarajevo. 402 was the Northwestern Pritzker School of Law. 403, our Latin American representative, uh, University of Sao Paulo. 404, Osgood Hall Law, Law School. 405, Cardozo School of Law. 502, Al Aqsa University from Egypt. 503, the German University in Cairo, Egypt. 506, the British University in Egypt. 508, I and Shams University, Egypt. 511, Université La Sages from Lebanon. 701, it was a Peking University, School of Transnational Law in China. 702 was a Singapore Management University. 704 was the University of St. Augustine, College of Law from the Philippines. 707 was the University of Philippines. Um, 708 was the University of International Business and Economics from China. 801 was the Macquarie University from Uganda. And lastly, I think it's the last one. 803 was the University of Witwatersrand, South Africa. So congratulations once more for participating. Um, it's a major accomplishment to be here. We do hope you enjoyed the moot and then you join us in the future. Uh, as Sarah mentioned, she will contact you. And this is pretty much a cold. You can never leave. Trust me, I was there in your position eight years ago. So <laughs> welcome to the cold and congratulations once more. Juliana is not joking when she says it's a cult. All of us in the organizing team have participated in moots, have judged moots, have coached moots, and then we end up here organizing them for you all. And we really take pleasure in it, as you can see. Um, so I'm going to proceed with the rest of the ceremony. I have the absolutely delightful task of announcing the team awards. Um, our colleague Camille usually does this because she has a beautiful voice, but just going to have to deal with me this year. Um, so as you all already know, the winner, the champions of the 16th International Price Media Law Moot Court Competition is the University of the Philippines. Please give them a round of applause, everyone. There they are, dressed in white. Um, I'm sure you can all see them. The runner-up, which gave them an absolutely diabolically strong fight, was City University of London, United Kingdom. You can see them all, Team 108. So those were the winners and the runners up. But we've also got the semi-finalists who were very, very close to making it to the finals. I must say at this stage that 
we had an unprecedented number of teams on three wins, which means that approximately seven teams won all three of their matches. So we can understand that there might have been heartbreak for many teams that thought they did exceptionally well and then didn't qualify for the semifinals. And, and we also shared that heartbreak because it was very, very close. And I, and I know you all think that we say this every year, but really the numbers sh show it all. So the semifinalists in alphabetical order are Peking University School of Transnational Law, China. I think they're here with us. University of International Business and Economics, China. So well done to our semifinalists. I'm sure we'll see some names from the finals and the semifinalists in the individual awards, but I, I mustn't give too much away. So moving then to complete our team awards, I'm going to announce the top 10 teams in the preliminary rounds. Starting with team number 10, Nalsar University of Law, Hyderabad, India. Big round of applause. I think you're here with us. The ninth best team in the preliminary rounds was the University of Oxford, United Kingdom. The eighth best team in the preliminary rounds was Singapore Management University, Singapore. The seventh best team in the preliminary rounds was Itvo Schloran University, Hungary. The sixth best team in the preliminary rounds was Northwestern Pritzker School of Law, USA. The fifth best team in the preliminary rounds was the University of San Augustin College of Law, Philippines. You can see them celebrating, everyone. <laughs> Congratulations. So there we are. Those are the rest of the top teams in the preliminary rounds. Congratulations to all teams. You did fantastically. And as my colleagues were saying, you had to get through regional rounds to actually get here. So it really is a big achievement. Moving on, if Nevena, Sarah, and Juliana have nothing else to add, Moving on to the individual awards. So this is something you all already know, and we, we sort of gave it away on social media as well. The best oralist in the finals this year was a tie, and everyone seemed to have different opinions as to who would be the best oralist. In, in the team that watched, in, in the organizing team that watched the finals, all of us were undecided. Uh, when we talked to some of the other members of the Mood community, they were also undecided as to who was the best oralist because everyone was just so good. And it turns out that the judges of the final bench were also undecided, and so they decided to award a tie. Um, we have Caitlin Farrell from City University of London, UK, and Brian Santa Maria University of the Philippines, sharing the best oralist in the finals award. Congratulations to both members um, of the finals. This is a really big achievement, um, so we're very proud of you both because we all saw how well you performed. It was, it was just fantastic. I know that my internet connection is slightly unstable. So if I cut out at any point, I'd like to request my colleagues to take over, but I can see everyone moving. So I'm going to proceed. The top oralists in the preliminary rounds. Now I know that all of the teams on this in this meeting are waiting to hear who the top oralists are. I must say at this stage that we had 101 oralists in total more than 100 oralists in total. So at 10th position, we had Samantha Hom from the Northwestern Pritzker School of Law. In the ninth position, we had Kieran Bailey, City University of London. In the eighth position, we had Anise McKinney, Northwestern Pritzker School of Law. In the seventh position, we have Samantha Riley, Northwestern Pritzker School of Law. In the sixth position, we have Adam Weibel, Oscar Hall Law School, York University. 
And in fourth position, we had a tie. So fourth and fifth were tied. And that is Nan Shao from Peking University School of Transnational Law and Lucy Ryder, University of Oxford. Congratulations to all of the oralists. Well done for making it to the top 10. We'd also like to now announce the best oralist runner up. And that is also, like I said, this year the quality of argument was just so good. This was also a tie. So we have the best oralist runner up shared between Georgiana Raluca Ondor from the University of Bucharest. I can see the coach celebrating on my screen. Congratulations. <laughs> I also uh, shared with Disha Mittal from Oscar Hall Law School, York University. And finally, best oralist, the most coveted award of the preliminary rounds, because this is the best oralist out of 101 oralists. So this is a big deal. The best oralist award goes to Owen Gwyn of Osgood Hall Law School, York University. Well done to all oralists and well done to all participants. We have a final set of awards before I hand over to Nevna to continue with the ceremony. And that set of awards is, as I said, challenging the emphasis on oralists. It really is a set of awards that <coughs> lords strong legal writing uh, that recognizes uh, convincing legal argument written down. So moving to the Memorial Awards, we have as runners up to the best Memorial Award, we have Peking University School of Transnational Law, China. And finally, the best Memorials Award goes to Singapore Management University, Singapore. Congratulations to all teams. I can see you celebrating there. Well done. Congratulations, teams. I'd like to now hand over to Nevena. Nevena, please continue with the rest of the ceremony. Thank you, everyone. And thank you so much for celebrating so wildly. It really feels like I'm there with you. Thank you so much, Sanya. And congratulations to all the winners of the awards. And as Sanya said, these ties just show us how uh, close it was and how high the level of competition was this year. Last but not the least, uh, as you all might know, we have a Jonathan Blake Spirit of the Competition Award, and we are very lucky to have Jonathan Blake with us as well. I'm going to uh, just say a couple of words about the award and who we are giving it uh, this year. And then I'm going to ask Jonathan Blake also to share a couple of words with you. So this year we would like uh, award of the John, uh, Jonathan Blake Spirit of the Competition. Uh, we will be giving it jointly to two teams. Uh, those are the two teams, Makarera University, Uganda, and the University of Witts, Waters and South Africa. Um, the award honors um, those members of the mute community who contribute to the to preserve in the face of adversity, to promote human rights education by participating in the prize moot. And our decision to host the moot online this year, once again, has several benefits. We have seen judges from all around the world that joined us from Brazil to the Philippines, but it has also caused difficulties to some of the teams who have experienced significant internet connectivity issues and long lasting power, power cut uh, power outrages. The teams to whom we have awarded the spirit of the competition this year kept going using mobile devices and data to plead and even going so far to argue in comp complete darkness during this period of time. So to both of the teams, we thank you for your spirit and the contribution to our vibrant, active community of the passionate mooters. And this is uh, the moment when I would love to invite Jonathan Blake as well, who is always so passionate and give us a lot of strength to move forward with this competition to say a couple of words. So Jonathan, the floor is yours. Congratulations to the winners of this award. Um, putting up with hardship 
and getting it done despite all the challenges certainly uh, qualifies for the Spirit of Competition Award. Um, I must say, um, next year I'd like to award the Sartorial Splendor Award, which the University of Philippines clearly won this year, <laughs> if you can see them on their screen. Um, and all the smiles around in this event, it makes it always wonderful, it's really special. Um, I'm always inspired by this event, despite being 3,000 miles away from Oxford, the spiritual home of this, but inclusive of the world. And uh, despite three or four years, thanks to COVID, not being all there in person. Um, and there are many sources of this inspiration and it's been covered by others. But there was, I wanted to point out that this year, I had a, I, I really wanted to focus on the nature to me, the foundational issues you have argued today and wrestled over for the last nine months, and I'm including all all the mooters in that, the judges, the coaches, et cetera. Um, has to do with the balance between freedom of speech and the protection of a country's stability and its ability to protect its populations. In my personal view, the right balance may not be the same in each country and in all circumstances. I love the, the phrase margin of appreciation because that, it seems to me, gives respect to the fact that different countries face different things and different issues and at different times. Um, without both uh, of those priorities and without there being proper balance, the public is put at risk, sometimes at great risk. Um, by foundational, I mean that if these issues are not in reasonable alignment, we cannot solve other issues like global warming, migration issues, and a whole host of others. And to me, this year, the need to get this balance right has been especially acute, looms large in many countries of the world, including my own and affects most of the world's population directly or indirectly. So I'm proud of this moot court competition for addressing these core issues with passion, intelligence, and balance. And I, I thought the finalists, and this has been my experience in the past, there's, there's real respect for understanding the, the tensions between those two priorities. And if you don't respect them, your argument is not as good as it should be because it's a very hard battle balance to strike. Uh, there are other sources of, of inspiration. Kate covered them really eloquently um, earlier at the sign off after the finalists and this crew. In order to be part of the, uh, of the organization crew, there's a requirement that you have charm. <laughs> they don't let you in otherwise. <laughs> and a sense of fun, as Kate said, um, uh, has, have covered it as well. Um, so I'm not gonna go over them, the coaches, the organizers, uh, this great team, uh, the Bonavero Institute, and looming over it all, as sort of the um, good uncle and shepherd Monroe and Amy, who is his loyal supporter and wife, who is here, who's at the moots every time. There was two other points I wanted to make. It, uh, really, it, it, the, this is a community and it goes back in time 
and hopefully moves forward into the future. Um, and that's hard to really recognize, but it is really true because you see these, and, and, and there are two benefits to that. One, as you heard from this group, um, they carry the um, moots forward, uh, going from one role to another, being cajoled and or uh, arm twisted to come back in various roles. And you come back with enthusiasm and you sustain it and improve it as, as times change and the issues have new wrinkles to them, as was indicated by this year's um, question, um, issue. But it's also um, for its participants in other instances, large and small, known and unknown to us, the participants, many of them engage in the good fight in many and diverse countries for the values that underpin the issues that these moots confront. To the extent that anybody keeps up with these things, uh, there's one who really does, it's all, in, embedded in his memory, one of the one of the great connectors of all time, Monroe Price, my friend, and um, well, you know him by his works, but his words and his by his, his thoughtfulness and his caring about this um, about this mood that we mean so much to all of us, and has an ongoing impact in many ways that we can't even count. So uh, going back to the competition, spirit of the competition, I hope we get back together again in Oxford, but you are part of a community. It's one to be very proud of. And, it's, it, and I, this year I wanted to make it clear that the issues that it tackles are so important. Um, and will probably always be um, challenging in the future. So it, it's sort of evergreen. Thanks to you all and congratulations to the winners of this and all the other participants going back to those who didn't even make it out of the regional rounds. They're, they're similarly Im important, engaged, benefited and contribute, contributing. Thanks. Sorry, Nevano, I think we we missed what you said just now. We can't hear you, Nevano. We can't hear you. Thank you. Hello, Camille. Hello. Very lovely to see you. you Thank too. you so much for your words. Yeah. Can you hear me now? We're yeah. hearing you now. Okay. It's great that this happened at the very end. Um, also, we. I just wanted to acknowledge that Camille is in the room. She just she managed to join us, and we are very grateful. And I just wanted to ask Camille if she would like to share a couple of words before we end this meeting with the teams and the participants, because she also did a lot of work in this process. Sure. Thank you so much, Nevana. So for me, I just wanted to say thanks first of all um, to the judges who are here and those who are not here as well. Um, you know, I think a big part of a competition for us is the community that we've been able to create um, through all the different experts in law and otherwise that join us each year to judge the competition. And an amazing part of the experience for students, of course, is being able to interact with, with persons who are working on these issues day to day 
and at the very highest level. So I think judges, you represent for the participants in the competition, you know, their future, um, who they could be. And we are so grateful that you gave up your time every year. Um, you know, the, as John mentioned, the cases are sometimes quite complex um, and require a lot of thought. And I think our judges each year um, take the time to understand the issues and to, you know, be very tough on, on students, question them very rigorously so that they can benefit greatly from the experience. So I just wanted to say also thank you so much to our judges and to the teams. For us as the organizing committee, it is our greatest joy to be able to organize this for you every year and to have you guys participate. And just looking at on my screen right now, I'm very, very excited, you know, to see teams together in the same place. And we're so hopeful that for all of us next year, that will be the experience that we'll all be together in the same place, um, you know, celebrating together, having drinks together, um, and just rekindling um, our community once more. So thanks so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Camille. This is a wonderful ending of this uh, ceremony. Uh, I will share in the chat uh, the link to our website. We published the awards. Hopefully we didn't make any mistakes uh, in this fairness. Also, I would like to let you know that all the certificates uh, will be in your Dropbox folder really soon. So go. The, uh, you should look once again to the folders in order to pick them up. And as Camille said, and I was telling that to the team at some point, like uh, we are really hopeful to meet in person again. And if that happens, I said also at one moment that we should just cancel the competition and enjoy. So maybe that can be the case also for the next year. Uh, but just as a last thank you to everybody. And uh, once again, congratulations to all the teams and all the award winners. So you, we will be, thank you all. And we will be looking for, uh, we'll be seeing you in different capacities. I'm, I'm sure in future years. Bye everybody.